thing. So um, I went through something similar, and I was going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. It was going to spin it. You know, I'm mm -hmm. the dude that want to shake the table. <laughs> so say your mom go through that with your, with your biological father, and he ain't no good, mm -hmm. and that whatever happened, happens. Mm -hmm. And she don't ever meet your stepfather who mm -hmm. introduced you to spirituality, who you have this great testimony with. Mm -hmm. And you grow up and you get into those middle ages where you don't have no longer have that example. Mm -hmm. So when you first said, when you see it, this you just observing. Mm -hmm. So speak to the young men who never got that second chance at a mm -hmm. stepfather, mm -hmm. what they should be doing to observe men in their environments outside of those titles. You're okay. not my father or my stepfather mm -hmm. because you just lost something. Mm -hmm. And just because you're full grown, you still needed that. that right. You never not need that. Right. So speak to the young men that might not have had the stepfather that could have done the thing that you were about to tell us about. Okay, well, maybe look, bring that back to me because we're gonna get we're gonna get into the young man's as, and, and what we're talking about. What basically what I'm bringing to the table today, brothers and audience, is my life story. And it's not something I read. It's not something you know. This is my actual life story. So, you know, this is, is real. Well, I wish the brothers would have warned me and told him. They said, we gave me interviewing this brother. So, you know, what is your life story? This, and we'll listen this, and I'll ask. No, no, no. I still want the interaction. Yes, Let me say this. It's because I know part of your story, but mm -hmm. I know nobody can tell it better than you. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it a lot more intimately mm -hmm. from that background. Right. And I know you'd be able to share it, which is why I wanted, you know, and part of life, we, we are brothers and we family. But see, you can open up and share that mm -hmm. with us mm -hmm. because you lived it. Right. Right. Yes. Each each phase. Each phase. So um, let me get back into uh, Brother Year. My ex that by that age frame that my mom and my spiritual dad got a uh, um, spiritual dad got married. So it was about that four. And like I said, you know, now he's we're growing up. Uh, he's a hardworking man. Um. Something he brought to us early on um, as we became a family was that he had two sons. Showed a picture, he said, um, I got two sons. I have two sons, two other children. So, you know, as children, we're like, oh, all right, where they at? You know, not much was talked about when it came to them. So, mm -hmm. so this, this is where all this is going to start to go at. So life goes on. Uh, my biological dad, He's not on the scene much, but my queen mother, uh, with her beautiful spirit, uh, she never let me forget him. You know, forget him. She she would always say, be it his birthday or Father's Day. Well, uh, you know, son, you, you know the day your dad's birthday. Uh, son, you know the day his Father's Day. Won't you call your dad and and tell him happy birthday? And as a child, I'm obedient. Pick up the phone, I call him. Tell him happy birthday or uh, happy Father's Day. It's normally pretty short, uh, the conversation. Uh, I remember, you know, going over, staying sometimes, uh, staying the night with him sometimes. He had met a, another woman. Uh, she, excuse me, she had a son that was about my age. So we would go over there sometimes, periodically, not, not a lot. Stay the night, weekend or whatever. So um, time's going on. I'm getting older and uh, got to be around that probably 11, 12, 13 years old. You know, then you know, start playing football, you put, doing push ups. You know? yeah, <laughs> when well, they say you start feeling yourself a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, she would ask again. I remember asking again. And um, like I said, I must have been around 12, 13. And she asked me to. And I said, Mom, look. With all respect, I said, I'm not calling that man. Mm. I said, I'm, I'm not, I, I've been doing it for you because you asked me to do it. I said, he can get in contact with me if he, if he wanted to. I said, but, uh, you know, just, you know, I've just asked you, please don't ask me to do it again because I don't feel comfortable doing it. And she agreed and said, okay, well, you you old enough to know and understand that is your dad. I said, yes, ma'am, I do. So, like I said, life is going on. Getting older. Now I'm getting into that 16, 17 years of age myself. And um, girls is a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I got active with young ladies. And I had a child. Got a 
on by the time I was 18. So, um, you know, I'm out there kind of doing what I'm doing. The household with my spiritual dad has become spiritual now. It's, it probably became that early on after they marriage. He became, you know, got in the church, kind of took us to church with him. And later he became a deacon. And, you know, uh, about this time he's preaching stuff like that's Baptist preacher. But, you know, he still got rules, regulations, structure is in the house, you know. And um, I was going against some of those things at that time. And uh, so... You know, as a young man, now I have a child out of wedlock. But uh, he was a hardworking man, provided for his family. But uh, emotion-wise, like, uh, or conversation-wise, it wasn't a lot of that there. You know, he, he wasn't a man I could have went to and really said, you know, only thing, he, you know, he, well, you better work and take care of that child. It's, it's, it's just blunt, you know what I'm saying? It's no, no. <laughs> No conversation about, you know, this is what I did, this is what happened, none of that stuff. So uh, I knew I had a child, uh, and I worked, and I did some other things that I'm not proud of, and, you know, we talk about that. But as a young man, being in the streets, y'all can understand and probably figure out what those things was. But at any rate, um, did some of that, and um, not long after, I had another young lady pregnant which is this young lady became to be my wife. But at the time, she's just a girlfriend. So now I got two children out of wedlock. By this time, um, my biological dad fell ill. So my sister was in contact with him more than myself. So um, they contacted me and like, you know, their dad's not doing good. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, um, um, yeah, we, we plan to go. He's in the hospital in Williston, Florida. We plan to go see him. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, y'all, you know, go see him. And because their relationship was a little different, I guess, with him than what mine was. And these, all the things we have to plug in, timing, timing is, is crucial in all these moments because, um, as you're going to see, you know, you don't know what a man or a young man is going through at the time. You know, you observing him. And like I said, he married my mom, but he had two children already. All right. At this time, I, I have two children. I'm not thinking about marriage or anything like that. Um, so even to back up to let you know the kind of, because I know it's a lot of young men that, that, kind of go through this, what I went through with my biological dad. Even to back up, just to throw one one scene in there. Um, I remember one night, like I said, I'm in the streets and uh, my sisters had a little gathering at one of their little apartments. You know, card game, that type of stuff. So, uh, periodically I would slide through. I let them, you know, maybe play a few hands of cards. But he was there one evening. My biological dad was there one evening. And um, I seen him there. And my sisters was do, you know, doing what they doing, but they was doing it in a respectful way. Because they like, you know, dad right now. I did what I did, and I didn't do it in a respectful way. Because <laughs> I, I, I felt like he's just another man right now. And like I said, actually at this time, um, you know, um, I was toting weapons illegally. And I think I even probably ramped up my disrespect a little bit because the thought in my head and the emotions in my heart, I wanted him to say something to me. And I thank the most high Yahweh that he didn't. Uh, you know, I, I was trying to be disrespectful because I wanted him to say something like, son, don't you know, uh, boy, don't you know I'm your father? And I had already rehearsed it in my head that I was going to pull my gun out on him and said, no, nigga, excuse me, audience, but no, you not. And wherever he wanted to take it from that point, I was ready to take it though. That's mm -hmm. the, the anger and stuff that had built up in me. 
Because like I said, you you know, you you growing up as a child and you're looking for that father-son relationship. And like I said, later, not only did my spiritual dad marry my mom, my biological dad married that lady and that had the son. So they had a son together. So now I'm getting word as a young man. I'm growing up. I'm getting word as a young man of the things he's doing with his new son. So in my heart, I'm like, well, you didn't do none of that with me. Uh, you ain't said nothing to me. Uh, where you was at when, when I was there? You know, so that resentment had built up. There. It was there. Yes, yes. So, uh, and like I said, you brothers can jump in at any time if y'all want to add or got a question about anything during these phases. So, uh, yeah, that's how I felt that night just to go to that little scene, but uh, then he was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, it's your biological dad. My, my yes. biological dad, yes. Okay. He was diagnosed yeah. with cancer. And so, uh, like I said, my sisters said they was going to visit him. And they got the understanding that I wasn't interested in going. So they did the next best thing, which was tell my mom, they don't want to go. <laughs> So once again, Queen Mother with a beautiful spirit and a beautiful self, she uh, kind of slyly coached me into going by saying, well, look, you know, it's not right in town and them your sisters, you probably need to ride with them just <laughs> for protection. And I, and I understood later that that was just a, you know, beautiful way of trying to get me down there to see him, you know. And, um, so with her saying that, I, I agreed to go. I said, well, you know, I'll go. i ride with y'all. And I did. I rode with him. And we got down to the hospital and, you know, went in. And my sisters, of course, they was pretty upset. And their emotions were showing that. And I just kind of stood back on the wall. And like I said, this time I got two children. So um, it, it did. And, and I had started my own kind of what? You know, looking into spirituality myself, I wasn't quite there, but you so know, I wasn't. Was I wasn't in the a moment at that time of forgiveness, or I wasn't there. Or I wasn't there, bro. I wasn't there yet. I, and, and I'm gonna get into that because, like I said, in standing in the room, um, you know, I was just kind of watching them and what they was doing, and and I think my sisters, uh, you know, got a sense that, well, let's give Dad and Dale a moment alone because they said. Mm -hmm. He said, well, let's, me and Gail, gonna, we're going to go down to the vending machine. That's their way of trying to leave me and him in the, yeah. in the room alone, maybe, you know, to have a talk. Right. And me, like I said, me, uh, once again, I still got the resentment. I'm not, I'm out at that point, you know. And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, and I, I'm going to just be blunt, tell you, like I said, <laughs> what I'm thinking, yeah, now this nigga finna come talking about well, son, you know, forgive me. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't the right father. I wasn't this, that. This, yeah. this is what I'm thinking. This, this story from the come. This is just what our vision is about to happen. Well, it didn't happen like that. Mm. He asked me how I was doing. I told him fine. I, I asked him how he was doing. He said, yeah. He told me I got this and that, and but, you know, with some treatment, I should be fine. So, okay. You know. Um, Told me he was in the church and, you know, got his life right with God and whatever God will is, he was all right with it. I said, well, that's good. I said, yeah, I'm kind of looking at, you know, studying spirituality myself and, you know, not out there like I used to be. Got a couple of kids, told him that. So our conversation was real so short. You're around for about what age? I'm about 21 now. 